we were hoping and praying to get the China agreement worked out. We not only got that agreement, but we got the Canada-Mexico agreement worked out as well. We went into this year with high hopes. After 2019, we had the best year with our Farm to Table program. Going into 2020, we had high hopes. We had no problems, everything was running smooth. We had lots of customers that were coming in wanting sweet potatoes and expected a normal year. You know, we kind of started out January uh, expecting kind of a normal year. Everything was good um, and everything had been good previous to that. 2020, January, we thought things were normal. We didn't have a clue this would last as long as it did. places started shutting down what what was that gonna do as as far as supplies and everything was concerned and we are still working even though the coronavirus is happening and it's all around us our end of it stayed the same until the vast number of people started staying home themselves and then all of our input products got kind of hard to get you know, we get a call from one of our large New York wholesalers and, and he goes to work that morning, 7 a.m. and he's got a sign on his front door saying he's closed because he's not essential. You know, and you kind of get a, 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 like you've been kicked in the stomach at that point and not 10 minutes later get the exact same thing from a Massachusetts wholesaler. While everybody has major concerns about this virus and what it's gonna do to impact our, our world and our uh, everything that's going on, just let you know that Farmers are still out here working. We've got a crop we still got to get to ground. Uh, while everything else stops, uh, the calendar keeps rolling. Prices have dropped below break even and everything's looking bleak. Uh, we're trying to use common sense and, and social distance as much as possible, but we still got to get the fields ready. So what we've been really doing is getting up and doing our schoolwork and then going out and doing stuff on the farm, like fixing fence and like doing this stuff and getting this place ready. A lot of supply chain disruptions, processing plants going offline, processing plants at capacity. So it was extremely difficult for us to keep up with the supply because the demand was there. But we ran into the issue with supply chain, uh, with our processing. We just couldn't, couldn't get enough products in the freezers, couldn't get enough products uh, to the people that wanted it. We couldn't meet the demand just because we've got three USDA processors in Arkansas. All of them were booked two, three years out. The virus did, of course, uh, infiltrate the plant where I happened to have my birds processed. And because of exposure or secondary exposure, because of that, it caused uh, us to have to have some higher out times. We went into 30 plus days, some as many as 35 day out times. It, it's a real challenge uh, with labor. Uh, because you know you have to care for for their needs um, and their family you know you've got a you've got folks with kids riding the bus that are exposed and all of a sudden they quarantine you know it's hard to get a full crew and that was exactly the same time as what our petitions for h2a labor were coming in uh, we started to see major problems with consulates closing and it wasn't just the mexican consulate it was south africa and all of them you know, our h2a labor is the driving force to our farm uh, without that labor, we have no farm. COVID has had a, has of course has with some of the mills that has shut down from three crews down to one crew because they had people sick or, or different reasons. Now we have record prices in lumber and it really hasn't translated back down to the landowner. It's definitely changed our business. Uh, we were very hands-on and face-to-face -face with our customers. 
Uh, we've had to change a lot. We've gone to curbside pickup only. Uh, we're trying to limit the number of people that are coming and going from the store. The normal market, which is just up the street here, is closed at the moment uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, uh, health precautions that we're taking. Uh, so about two weeks ago, we put together an online ordering program for ourselves and a couple of neighboring farms. It's a, it's a new way of doing things for us. We're going to have it where our customers can come and pick their products up at the market. We'll even do some home deliveries or uh, whatever we need to do to make sure that our customers are taken care of. We've taken this time just to kind of slow down and uh, think about our future goals and plans and what we'd like to accomplish on the farm. Um, it's been so nice to have some extra time at home in the evenings and on the weekend with the girls to uh, go to the farm and work. More or less the average year that we deal with farming as far as the weather, uh, equipment malfunction, uh, other than that, I had a pretty good year in 2020. So we all know that agriculture cannot stop. And as farmers and ranchers, um, we don't get days off, uh, no matter what's going on in the world around us. Farmers and ranchers have always had, you know, adversities that they have to face, and whether that's weather related or challenges with the market or this new era that we're in, we still have a responsibility to take care of our farms and our ranches the best way that we can. Even though we're kind of getting over it, I think we're going to have some lasting effects that will take years to get over. Still, the consulates are still having issues. You know, we got a new administration in in January and they shut down the South African travel. That was a major issue for us. So we're still dealing with coronavirus problems today. Still a little bit of supply chain problems. I know polypipe is twice as much as it was last year. These businesses really need people to come back to work uh, to help us manufacturers and all get parts in and parts made and then the delivery process of getting those on the, to the farmers. There's a silver lining to everything. Uh, you know, I think the pandemic probably brought to attention a lot of people's minds that, that never really thought about it before of, of the supply chain of our, our, our food supply, you know, where the steps it has to take to get from the farm to the table. And you know, it, a lot of people want, want that more direct path. You, you can't do this business if you can't take a punch. And uh, we, we're gonna sure be set up for next year. And um, you know, that's, that's all you can do. You can't, uh, you know, you can control the things you can control and, and the things you can't, then uh, you know, you gotta be able to accept that and uh, make adjustments. Uh, as we entered into the 2021 crop year, uh, the weather has played a big factor for me as far as my farming operation. As you can see, uh, the snow apocalypse of 2021 uh, has been here and it's gone as of yesterday. Uh, we were left here with about uh, close to 10 inches of snow here in Perry County, 22 years of raising birds I've never experienced. Uh, temperatures like we've had the last few days. It was one like we've never experienced before while well, we've been in operation. Uh, it got as, as cold as we've ever seen and we actually ended up having to pour some milk out because we couldn't get it to the market. It's been a cold two or three days, finally the sunshine which is good to see. Uh, all we've been doing is trying to get tractors started and we've got a few cows of cabin we've had two or three so far no problems thank goodness and in this type of weather uh obviously it's hard for the the water and to keep them having plenty of water they drink a lot of water during this time um and trying to keep it thawed out but they eat a lot of feed right now as far as the hay we're going to keep it out 24 7 and that way they've got a full belly and they're not burning calories just to stay warm devastating. We had not seen that kind of weather ever. I can remember five degrees and we had peaches a year and I thought oh well, they're safe. They're in the bud, they're tied in the bud and they're safe. Got down to negative 10 at this location and uh, really affected our buds uh, and so uh, we were going to try to keep going. Had a, had a pretty short crop but uh, we were going to try to crop it out and then uh, April 21st we had about 27 degrees and it kind of kicked the other leg out from under us. I 
I've lived here in Deshaies County all my life. I served as a county judge for 20 years here and uh, farmed for uh, uh, most of my life here. Never seen the rain and uh, the flooding that uh, we've encountered the last week. I've been farming here since uh, 89. And we got like 19 inches of rain. And so anytime you have that much water in one place, you're gonna have a lot of devastation. My wife called me and I was in uh, Little Rock at Capitol and uh, she said, the water's coming in our house. I said, I can't stop the rain, baby. Uh, when I come home, you got baby pictures on the closet floor with the water soaking up. Hundreds of thousands of acres underwater, which is a significant loss uh, in, in crop loss. We just hope it gets out here as fast as we can where we can replant and hopefully salvage something out of this this year. At the end of the day, I'm still farming. We're all still farming. It hasn't stopped. It will not stop. We're still farming. We're still farming. We're still here. We're going to continue to farm. We're not going to quit. We're still farming. We're still farming. Yeah, I'm still farming, and there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. And there's nowhere I would rather be than on my farm producing healthy, sustainable beef. Farming is still in my blood and always being, no matter what, I'll always continue to farm.